Hi, this is Eric Keller for Octane, and in this video we're going to talk about using lights within Octane Renderer for Maya. So I have a very simple scene right here, which is just kind of a temple made up of polygons, kind of simple. Got a little window over here. And uh, let's talk about working with lights in this scene. Uh, I have my render settings set to Octane Renderer, and I've got my kernel type set to Direct Light, I've got my graphics cards enabled, and I'm going to set the max samples just to 1000 here, just so we have a nice fast preview. Let's go into the render view, and I'm going to choose render snapshot camera one, and let's do an IPR render. So it loads the geometry into the renderer, and what we see when we render is not a black scene, but instead we see kind of a bright white scene. So what's going on is that uh, you can kind of think of the octane universe as being pure white and that pure white color uh, it basically affects the lighting in the scene when we render it using the diffuse kernel. So the first thing we need to do when working with lighting, especially in an interior scene, is we need to create something that's going to block out all that extra light. And typically what you'll want to use is the sun and sky node. So let's close this for the moment. And I'm going to click on this icon here to create a sun and sky node. And let's take a look at the attribute editor. I'm going to leave this to texture environment. And the texture here, which is set to one by default, meaning white, I'm going to set that to zero, meaning black. And so if I go back into the render view and do another render, we should see a dark scene. So now there's no extra lighting affecting the scene. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light to the scene. So if I go over to the Octane Render Shelf and click on this little light bulb icon right here, and let's make sure that locators are visible, we can see this right here, this yellow sphere represents the Octane Sun Sky Transform. I'm going to set the radius of this to something like 200 just so it's out of the way. I'll select the Octane Light Transform. Let's press the W key for the Move tool. We can see that if I switch to the perspective view and zoom in, the light itself is represented by this little sphere. So if we go back to uh, Camera 1 and pull up the Render view, and now if we do a render, we'll see that there's a little light right there and it's in fact, it is emitting light into the scene in all directions. So it's kind of like a spherical area light. It's bigger than a point light. It's not a single point because it actually does have a radius, um, but it's emitting light in all directions like you would assume for like a candle flame or something like that. So I'm gonna select the transform here and take a look at its attributes. The first thing I wanna do, I wanna set the geometry type to movable proxy, just like it would for any kind of geometry that's non-deforming. That way, while I have the render view open, if I choose to move the light, we can see that the render view will update. So you can see I'm moving it around here and it updates instantly. If it's not updating, double check and make sure that geometry type is set to movable proxy. The next thing I'm going to do is I can set the size of the sphere and I prefer to use these uh, fields right here rather than the standard Maya scale tool. So that ensures that it's actually scaling correctly. So let's type in 20. Let's try hitting the IPR button again. There we go, that's a big light. When you're setting the size of the light, you only need to actually adjust the X field here under size. You don't need to adjust Y or Z. The X field uh, represents the radius of the light. To change the brightness of the light, we wanna go down to the power setting and this we can think of as being kind of the wattage of the bulb. So if I set this up to say a thousand, we can see it gets significantly brighter and it's casting more light into the scene. If I set it up to 2000, you get the idea. It gets a lot brighter. Uh, we can also change the color of the light by adjusting the temperature. So if we move this in this direction, we're gonna get a cooler light color so if we move it off to the right, we get cooler colors. If we move it over to the left, we get warmer colors. Let's have a nice kind of cool color there. 
The efficiency you can kind of think of as in the fall off in typical CG lights. So the efficiency is uh, 0.250 by default. If we want to uh, increase the efficiency, if we pull this up, you can see that the light is traveling farther from the, the uh, light source. I'm going to leave it at 0.25 by default. And then the sampling rate, of course, is going to affect the quality, especially of the shadows in the, uh, in the scene. So if we increase the sampling rate, it also will probably increase render time somewhat. But you can see how much smoother it is without having to adjust the render settings. You've already made it look a lot nicer. The opacity is basically the opacity of that volume. So if we set this all the way down to a low volume, we can see it's just barely visible there. Let this set this back to one. And I'm going to go down to the visibility folder and we have the visibility in the scene. So this is another way to control how the camera sees the light. If I turn off camera visibility, then we no longer see the light source. We just see the effect of the light source. And shadow visibility, it's not how the light casts shadows, but whether or not this spherical volume actually casts shadows when other lights hit it in the scene. And usually you want to turn that off. Uh, it depends, but most of the time I like to leave this off so that I'm not getting weird shadows cast by lights. Because you can see these two different settings, you know, I could have camera visibility off and shadow visibility on. And if I have another light in the scene, that might be causing the light, this light to cast a shadow on the scene like an object, which is kind of weird. So I usually turn both of these off. And that's the basics of just setting up a simple light in Octane for Maya.